Saul, good to see you. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Um, as you know, the premise here, we have our distributed SQL Summit going on, and uh, a few people from your team, Nathaniel and Joe, are going to be speaking at the event, so appreciate the support mm -hmm. from Wells' perspective. But before we go there, I thought, you know, you've been in this role for three, yeah. three years now? Yeah, three so. now. Yeah. So maybe if you could share kind of the broader picture at Wells, like yeah. what's happening, uh, you know, what are your major objectives, what have you accomplished, where you're headed, that kind of thing. That would be helpful to kind of frame this broader discussion we're going to have. Thank you for that, uh, yeah. Bill. And it's great to see you again. Good and to see you. It's great to be here and have the opportunity to say something about the things that we are doing. Um, I started three and a half years ago, to your point, and if I look at the role of uh, a CIO nowadays, it's, it's about two roles that you have to fulfill, being a trusted operator and being a business driver. And right. if you look at the first two, two and a half years, we really focused on being a trusted operator, meaning building the skills, not only for the current technologies, but also for the future technologies, um, making sure that we have a secure plant as a bank, and making sure that we have a stable plant as much as we can guarantee that. And we have made strong progress. It's never linear, as you know, so there are setbacks as well, but underlying trend is definitely being better as a trusted operator. At the same time, we also put down foundations to be more of a business driver, meaning act with more speed. Uh, to give you an example, when we started three and a half years ago, it took us 65 weeks to accomplish something like a meaningful project or scope. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, we do that in 24 weeks average, but that's not satisfying enough. Mm. It should be eight to 10 weeks. So speed really matters and feature and shipping of code mm -hmm. should go faster. That is our real uh, priority for the future. Scalability is another uh, focus point and priority for the future, where you don't uh, organize yourself to peak levels and have a sunk cost base and uh, an infrastructure that is all around the peak level. It is as elastic as you can expect. Mm -hmm. So you will see that we invest quite a bit in a full cloud migration to public and private cloud as a bank. And then last but not least, we measure our success by success, meaning employee satisfaction, customer satisfaction and the level of innovation that we do. Mm -hmm. and, and what was the biggest thing that you implemented to drive yeah. some of these things? Now, if you look at uh, the job career uh, framework uh, for 40,000, 42,000 technologists around the world with career paths, development paths, and a technology college is one of the things. Together with another partner, Pluralsight and a Cloud Guru, we have over 300,000 self-assigned courses completed by over 36,000 unique learners last year. And we are taking the number two spot of the biggest adoption of a online technology college that we enabled on the back of career paths and development paths. Um, we have now distinguished engineers that we didn't have before. If you look at security, we have rolled out everything around EDR which is really the endpoint detection that you need to have, mm -hmm. given what is going on with ransomware. Uh, I can give you examples around stability and what we have done there, especially in, in, in the world of resiliency and resiliency testing. And on speed, I think the most important and uh, remarkable point is that we have now 5,000 Scrum teams. Uh, we have merged all the different IT functions that we had into multifunctional teams, so cross-discipline uh, teams. And we have pushed out more uh, 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 scope in terms of story points. That made it possible that we have now faster delivery. Great. So I can give you a whole <laughs> lot of metrics. Don't get me started there. Some of these metrics sound familiar to me. I think yeah. we had this discussion uh, many years ago uh, when we started the journey together with Pivotal, right? We were talking about many of these business yeah. outcomes of yeah. what we were trying to drive from a technology perspective. and. Yeah. Obviously, here at Yugabyte, we're driving the same kind of philosophy yeah. and, and mindset. And to your point about the education and training, we were just talking to your team about it. When you're driving new innovation, yeah. like we are, the skills required, yeah. right? If you think about it from a database perspective, uh, you know, how, how do we go about helping the industry uh, and the people skills and yeah. how do they see their career yeah. paths? It's going to be really important. So we really do appreciate the collaboration. We will be talking about that topic here at the event. Good. So as we were just talking about kind of our shared history together and what we've been able to do, as you pull up a level 
What, what, what do you think are the most important lessons learned along the way, a journey of driving transformation, driving innovation, driving yeah. change yeah. in a company of this size? You, know, you have a lot of experience doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I, I love doing it. Um, and I think there are many lessons learned in terms of things and mistakes that I made or that we made as teams. Um, and I think I would sum it up in a, in a couple of ways. Okay. First of all, no, really know your point of departure. Many people start the transformation without knowing where they come from or mm -hmm. where they want to go to. And when you know your point of departure, where you are at that point, you can start comparing yourself to what you can call a benchmark or a best in class. So you start to define that stretch between where you are and where you could go to or should go to. Um, when you know that, then you can start articulating, hopefully, an ambition and vision that can help people to rally towards that vision or that mission, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And I give you an example. One day we used the, the phrase of uh, uh, make the elephant run. A uh, large bank is sometimes seen as very slow, in some cases really the case. It's also an elephant. It's a lot of mass that you have to get in motion. So mm -hmm. make the elephant run really ticked with the people, it ticked and tied with, yeah, that's actually what we are going to do. Um, that's not enough. You need to break that down in what you can call strategic pillars, uh, initiatives. Uh, you have to get the resources in terms of the means, the money, the investments. You have to get the priority from the board, your colleagues. That all comes with pretty articulated plans, where those plans are more guidance than carved in stone type of drop dead dates. If you don't make the date, the whole plan is rubbish. No, I, that's not how we work. Mm -hmm. um, Talent, you will need to promote or hire the talent onto the team that can do this. Um, and when you all have all of that, then your, your, your mission, your vision, you need to break that down in metrics, like I just said. Right. If you don't know where you go to and you cannot measure it, it it's not really meaningful, to my opinion. Mm -hmm. When you know the metrics, you can bake it into the performance cycle, you can do reviews around it, you can go deep on the setbacks. And then I think the final point around this is really around communication and values. Um, communication means be open and transparent about the wins and the setbacks. Uh, transparency builds trust. That's a very important value that I embrace. Uh, and secondly, be modest when things are going well and be strong when things are going bad. Right. That's when you're supposed to be a leader. And that's what you have to do as a team. Now, I can say many more things, uh, but I think this is based on my learnings, my mistakes, and the things that I've seen. And we're going to talk more about the database here in a second, but I'm, I'm just thinking about the answer you just gave and you know the elephant analogy. Yeah. When we're talking about core database technology, yeah. and we're a transactional database, as yeah, you yeah. know, and yeah. it's a it's an innovation story, a distributed systems approach, yeah. which is the only way you get the automation scale and performance. How do you think about the heart of the elephant and driving innovation and change? Because that's like heart yeah. surgery in some sense. Yes. Um, this is where y you have to take an approach where you have to balance patience with ambition. And the ambition is always the driver to change the thing. But if you don't take patience in terms of making sure that you upscale the teams that are going to do this, making sure that you declare a standard when it's a standard, making sure that you know what you're going to replace and how to replace that. Making sure that you allow a team to make a mistake and learn from that mistake. Uh, making sure that you have the investments, but also the, the outcomes, the benefits of that change, that innovation, that you have that in mind. And if you look at the Yugabyte transition in that sense, we are along that path of yes. putting those things together with your teams in place to do it in a meaningful way and like I can push my hand on the button and say to all the teams, you have to do it now. But if you're not ready, it becomes a very meaningless command. Right. And it's not my style. I rather see people, uh, maybe that's the best way of saying it, Bill, if you want to have people building a boat, make them long for the sea. Yeah. 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 And how do you make them long for the sea is by showing the advantages of that technology that you're implementing. Right. Making sure that they see that, that upside and by longing for that, they start to do it. Yeah. And then back to your story about, you know, the progress we've made on the application side, on DevOps and now DevSecOps. Data is obviously the next piece of that. It's the next How piece. do we make that part of the same automated chain, which yes. helps with that whole story? Absolutely, absolutely.
you know, in the financial industry, and you know this well, yeah. security and compliance and regulations are an important integral part of what you're doing and driving some of the innovation from a technology perspective. I, you know, I like to think of this as an important thing. You know, it's not like playing defense. It's almost like playing offense, right, On in the sense of, how do we just make these environments more secure, yeah. uh, more accessible in the sense yeah. of getting the right people with information they need? So how do you think about it? How do you think about security as it relates to the database industry? Yeah, and it's... it's this uh, is like a loaded question, I know. No, no, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it is. And at the same time, I give you a very simple answer on a maybe loaded question that uh, it's about the blue berry muffin business. So you will ask me, where are you going now? <laughs> but it's really around, if you look at solutions that, that we buy or that we implement or that we build ourselves, it's all about having uh, a blueberry muffin solution. What do we mean with that? If the blueberries are the compliance and security requirements, and if you buy a blueberry muffin and it's a muffin and then afterwards you have to push in the blueberries, <laughs> that is not a blueberry muffin that I you're see. buying, yeah. right? So this is all about having the compliance and security requirements embedded in the solution before you start even using or buying the solution. Now, when you deal with innovative solutions like Yugabyte, you cannot uh, expect right from day one that every blueberry is already part of the blueberry muffin. We're that, working on it. We're working I, on no, it. no, absolutely. And I think that collaboration with partners where we make clear what is absolutely needed and what is over the top and not needed, making sure that we help the partners to get there and at the same time get the pushback and the, the normal dialogue that you would expect, that creates the blueberry muffin for us. That's not enough. Security and compliance is important, but the muffin in itself needs to you know, adhere to a couple of things. I think, first of all, it needs to be uh, supporting agility. So anything that comes with handoffs or difficult manual provisioning is not the world that we want to be in. Right. Uh, secondly, it needs to combine resiliency with high performance, which is not always easy for some of the solutions. Uh, thirdly, it needs to be cloud native. It needs to be uh, cloud service provider agnostic. And that needs to be value for money in the end as right. well. So the whole muffin is the whole package right. with the blueberries of right. compliance and right. security. But don't forget about the other things. And what the teams like, uh, uh, Bill, is, is the way we collaborate together, your teams and our teams, and the fact that we are taking a plunge in terms of embracing and endorsing innovative solutions in a space, the database space and the data space, that is ripe for innovation. Yeah, and important that the customer level, important at the executive level, at your board level, right? Yes. You think about compliance and security. Yeah. And then you think about the trends underneath all of this with cloud infrastructure, with keeping data in country where you're processing and yeah. having the resilient scale and performance that we talked about. Yeah. You have to automate, you have to have a distributed system yeah. database to get yeah. there. And so that's why we're, we're pushing so hard and so happy about the collaboration of us working together. And it's not just us, right? It's the broader industry as well. Same here, Bill. So maybe one last comment, you know, at the summit, we're, we're talking about really many of the elements that we just talked about, mm -hmm. right? The whole DevSecOps mantra mm -hmm. that has been, you know, been going on for maybe a decade or so, mm -hmm. driving business outcomes, mm -hmm. the people skills aspects of this, mm -hmm. security and compliance. And so I guess as a final point, um, data at the core, mm -hmm. database and data architecture, and mm -hmm. providing guidance to your teams as it fits into this agility, scale, and performance cloud native world seems to be really important. Yeah. Are there any final comments you'd have about that? Like as you think about, because there's, I guess my point is there's a lot of things on your plate. Yeah. At Wells, a lot of priorities. Yeah. Where does this fit as yeah. you think about the, 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 the broader spectrum? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So DevSecOps is of course one uh, uh, way to look at it and then you have the full stack where the code, the UI, the logic, the database, the data are the other way to look at it. Now, if you look at how, how we uh, and how I look at this is you cannot do this by layer of the stack. You have to take a stack approach. Two, you cannot do this on the back of, oh, everything is now this new technology and let's go there. You have to distinct greenfield or new applications or new workloads from existing workloads. We will need help or by ourselves or with your teams about 
the assessment of what is currently already there and what can be easily migrated and what will be the harder stuff to do right. so that you get a sense of prioritization with each, with each other. Yeah, and then last but not least, I keep coming back to people because technology is still built and, yeah. and executed by people. Um, there is something like the whole upskilling and making sure that that adoption is happening at scale, not right. a team of five who think this is great. It needs to happen through 500 people. That scaling, all those things, you have to bring that together. The stack view, the process view of DevSecOps, and then those components that I just mentioned. Yeah, and I think it's really important, and, and we're trying to do our part as well. It's not just about the database per se, how we fit into that whole landscape, how we're helping on that journey. You mentioned some of the migration tools that we're collaborating on. How do we automate more and more of that process? So all of those elements are going to drive back to your business outcome point, yep. the business outcomes that we're all totally. trying to drive for. So thank you for your time. Appreciate the partnership and look forward to what we can do together over the next few years. Thank you, Bill. Okay. My pleasure. Thank you. Hi.